Hi, I'm attorney Greg Dell, and I'm joined today by attorney Stephen Jessup. And today we're going to discuss a recent court case victory for a Cigna disability insurance claimant. Now, this was a case that came out of Pennsylvania. It has a lot of history to it, a lot of moving parts that went on with the case. And Steve, can you fill us in and let us know what are the benefits that a Cigna disability claimant can take away from this recent victory? Well, I think the, probably the biggest one on, on this particular case is the fact that the condition that she was suffering from was Sjogren's, um, which a lot of the complaints, the fatigue, the pain that may be associated are quote unquote subjective in nature. Um, Cigna was trying to push that, well, there's no objective medical evidence of, of the complaints. It's all based upon your self-report. So they continue to deny the claim. The interesting thing is she filed this claim in October of 2008. Before Cigna even rendered a decision, Social Security had already come through and approved her. Um, and then in January, Cigna denied. She, uh, uh, she appealed June 2009. There was another denial. And this case, this, the, the, uh, the court decision just came out in March of 2012. So we're talking quite a amount of time before it finally got wow. to it. Um, but in this, the, the and, the, and this policy had two appeals, which is a little unusual. Most policies have one appeal. One appeal, yes. Yeah. Signal you only see one. Usually, it's not too often you see the voluntary appeal in it. Um, so the court was going through, uh, you know, all the information and taking a look at the review that was conducted by Cigna. Um, they noted that it was only uh, reviewed on a, a peer review, a file review paper, even though she'd requested to send her to an, an independent medical evaluation since they didn't believe her. Um, the court had uh, held that they felt that the opinion of her treating physician who had had a history with her um, was uh, carried much more weight than that of a, a essentially a doctor who, who looked at a stack of paperwork. So with this one, it, it was a victory for whether it be chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia. There's a lot of the claims where they always say it's only subjective. Where's the objective proof? It's all self-report. Well, here, you know, it's kind of true and tested, uh, you know, logic in, in some of the courts that uh, you can't necessarily provide objective evidence for subjective complaints, and to do so is inappropriate. So this case was also, I remember you were telling me there was a great, a great quote in the case where the judge was saying, look, I know there's no treating physician rule mm -hmm. where we're going to give deference to the treating, um, the doctor who's treating mm -hmm. the claimants versus the insurance company doctors, but when I have a condition where there's no objective test, I mean, there's no test in the world that's going to confirm for me whether or not she really is suffering from this condition, that I have to defer mm -hmm. to a certain degree to the treating doctor who's seen the claimant more often. And what he was saying, too, is where a treating physician gives an unequivocal statement of support um, as opposed to a peer-reviewing, file-reviewing doctor, uh, it calls into question the motive of the peer review doctor, and here the court said it almost lends itself to think that, that that hired doctor by the insurance company is just looking for a way to basically further the insurance company's agenda to deny the claim. Right, now what's kind of, this is a great victory for a, a Cigna disability claimant, but what's kind of screwed up about this is that how many cases have we seen the same fact pattern and the court has gone the other way and said that the disability carrier didn't act mm -hmm. unreasonably? Mm -hmm. It's, so, it's very true. Every court, uh, you know, district court, everyone kind of reviews things slightly different. So it can be very, very hit or miss. It's very complex and it shows that, you know, as much uncertainty as you may face during the period and in the course of having a claim, uh, even in the legal system, the uncertainty is, you know, exponentially even greater once right. you get into court. Right. Now, this wasn't a case that, that our firm handled. So we don't know exactly what was done during mm -hmm. the appeal stage to mm -hmm. possibly you know, what Cigna failed to look at or didn't look at, but it is a great victory for claimants, and now it sets a precedent mm -hmm. for other cases and cases that can be relied upon amongst all the other cases that we know about around the country in which Cigna claimants have won their claims as well. Yeah, so hopefully with enough, you know, courts holding one way, you get enough body of law that, you know, it can start to become more and more persuasive uh, in, other, in other courts. Right, and like we always tell all the Cigna claimants that call us and in many of our other videos that if you have a claim, whether it's at the appeal stage or the application stage or you have, you've exhausted your appeals, you need to file a lawsuit, we're available at any time to provide you with a free consultation, answer your questions, review your claim, and basically let you know if we're going to be able to help you to secure your benefits or keep your benefits coming to you. Feel free to call us at any time.